Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leo and today we're gonna continue with the lighthouse. But before we do that, I just want to give you a quick reminder guys, we're gonna have a special video today at 6 p.m. Uh, India time. So if you're watching this at 12 p.m., which is usually when the video airs, make sure to come back later in the afternoon so that you too can uh, look at that very nice video that we've prepared for you. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna spoil anything, just keep, keep uh, watching. If you're watching this later on, uh, throughout the day, then you've probably seen both of the videos already. Uh, so yeah, just a small, little, nice little surprise for you guys. So uh, we're gonna continue with this guy right now and I wanna talk about uh, something very specific that's, that we're gonna be using on this uh, cliff right now. Now, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to, um, I don't think we're gonna be able to export the textures for visualization here inside of uh, Maya. So I'm gonna jump into Substance Painter. I'm gonna talk about the specific technique that uh, we're gonna be employing for this particular thing and then we're just gonna uh, go from there, okay? Now, uh, before we do that though, as you can see the UVs here, not cool, right? Like we did a planner mapping uh, yesterday when we were trying to just like, just like a tileable texture, uh, but this is not gonna work, of course. So I'm gonna show you a very quick, dirty way in which we can create some nice UVs. So I'm gonna grab like all of these faces right here and selecting those faces, I'm just gonna say UV I'm gonna say uh, planar mapping, camera base projection, apply. And that, as you can see, created a cut right there. And the reason why I'm using this instead of going like manually cutting the edges is as you can see, the edge loops are not gonna be like anywhere near clean. So I, I really need to find like a way to cut these pieces in a, in a different kind of way. So now I'm gonna do like something similar. I'm gonna grab like all of those like backwards facing uh, faces, like all of those guys, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, like a big chunk over there. And we're gonna do something similar. So planar mapping, there we go. As you can see now we have a, a new cut over there. And then I'm gonna grab all, all of the bottom faces. So like like a big chunk again over there. Let's go to the bottom side and hit apply. So what I, I just did right there, if I were to go into UV, UV editor, you're gonna see that I created like four islands, like four different islands, like one, two, and then three and four. So those four islands are gonna be a lot easier to unfold. I can just hit control U and if uh, Maya is nice enough, we'll get a nice unfold, there we go. I'm gonna hit control L to lay, that, lay them out, and this is a map, like this is a, a, a little bit better of a, of a UV map, like you can see that the texture is nicely laid out, there's very like simple seams that we're gonna be able to, uh, let me turn this uh, thing off, there we go, so that we can see it a little bit more properly, so let's open this up, and if I select this object, you can see that the, that the squares there are not distorted at all, like they look very, very nice, so if I were to like create a map or, or, or tile a map around this area, so we would get a nice result. And this is what they're using. I've been doing some research about Nanite, which is the new thing inside of Unreal Engine 5, which is gonna allow us to pretty much bring like a 50 million polygon uh, sculpture from ZBrush into, um, into what's the word, into Unreal. And, uh, and there's like three different ways in which they're doing it. First, you could have like a low poly and then subdivide it a million times and get your sculpture and that way you keep the UVs from your low poly and then just texture normally. You could uh, also um, do this, like some quick UVs and then just tile textures onto it and that's also fine. Or you could just poly paint, which uh, it's good for certain things, but it's not gonna be great for like very specific environments like this one. So today's class, we're not gonna be, it's like a school, right? Like we're back at school. <laughs> uh, so today we're gonna bring this guy out so I'm gonna say file export selection and let's go to our assets uh, lighthouse cliff and I'm gonna call this cliff textures and let's go into substance painter by the way today they released a new thing for substance 3d designer now 3d designer is one of those softwares I do know how to use like very little like no, I'm not a I wouldn't consider myself a pro uh, but I've, I've gotten myself around it and I, I know how to do some like a couple of things let me know if that's something that you guys would like to learn like I, I don't think it's a particularly useful software for a small size company like uh, in my case our studio um, because we, we don't have the resources to have someone doing materials and material instances and stuff uh, but for like a big company uh, surface artists are really really um, really valuable so if that's something that you guys would like to see, let me know and we'll, we'll get into the pipeline. We have our, our pipeline like a <laughs> like a full pipeline. There's a lot of things that we're gonna be having. By the way, tomorrow's uh, Thanksgiving, so we might have a little bit of a special thing as well. So let's go here, assets, a lighthouse, and we're gonna use our cliff. So cliff textures. Now, 
The uh, we're gonna texture this, let's say 4K, just to see like some nice textures. And uh, we're gonna use a method which is called a layer materials. And uh, here's the deal: like we could, of course, like just try to texture this like nicely. Like I say, I just draw like a concrete texture right here. Uh, but unfortunately, even if I were to tile this texture like quite a bit, let's say like 10 repetitions. I mean, it's, it's not going to be bad, right? Like, it, it doesn't look bad. However, if the character is going to be, like, really, really close to the ground, the pixelation is going gonna, is gonna to come out uh, and you're going to be able to see it. And that's something that you definitely don't want to see in your game. Like, pixelation would look horrible. And, and due to the fact that this thing is such a big environment piece, it would be very difficult to have, like, a super big map, like, I don't know, like an 8K or 16K map uh, to hold that, like, resolution. So we're going to be using something called... Um, layer materials and the way this works is you're going to go over here to the to the material settings to the shader settings and you're going to change this from uh whatever it's right there the the standard metal metallic roughness to this one right here which is called material layering pbr material layering and the way this works is you're not going to be painting like specific layers we're going to create channels that we later are going to have to recreate inside of uh inside of unreal we're going to be creating channels and then we're going to be masking out certain parts of those channels now this doesn't mean that we can't have our normal maps or like here like the like the traditional map so i'm going to bake like a 4k map just like a basic like a normal uh we could actually do like a like a high resolution low resolution thing i, I don't think we need it uh we just need like the ambient occlusion and the and the position map and, and we're going to be fine uh, but if you want to like bring the sculptor from ZBrush and, and bake it, you could do it. The problem is we're not going to be exporting that 4K map because, again, the, the normal map would be very, very uh, low quality. So, so that's not something that I want. So the way this works is you're going to go here and we're going to insert or we're going to use different presets here for our element. Now, um, I know that I normally try to use materials that you guys have access to. Let me see if I can get some as well here gonna get some <laughs> so let me go so for those of you that are not aware there's of course substance share and substance share is the free um it's the free like upload for for us right so if you're here in substance shares with your account like mine is right there abraham leal i can look for like let's say cliff and there might be some cliff like this faceted rocks like this one's not half bad like it, it looks it looks okay that's a it's a good material and we can use it i do find it's a little bit like not perfect right and there's in the, in the paid version when you are subscribed i am personally subscribed to the i am personally subscribed to the indie license i have access to uh, a lot of assets here inside of the of the substance platform and uh, i have access to materials as you can see i have a thousand more than a thousand points and i can use them as i please each material here costs me one point and as you can see these materials are really 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 good so for instance like this one slick rock cliff i think this one it's pretty close to what we want right like this is kind of like the like the thing that we're seeing here on the concept so it's like a, like a cliff like a normal like like hard like edge cliff so so this one's gonna work of course uh, a lot better so i'm just gonna download this svsr the substance archive and uh and i do need some sort of like a dirt so let me get like some like just you know like yeah like this rumbly dirt soil i think this one's this one's great so i'm gonna i'm gonna download that one as well and i want to get like a, i think like a sand would be nice so let me look for sand and uh that's like golf bunker sand no that's that's kind of weird schoolyard sand no like this one dirty sand ground i think this one's gonna it's gonna work so I have these three materials. Now, some of them, uh, as you can see, that they're really, really heavy. Depending on, on how complex the material, like archive or, or shader is, uh, the heavier it's going to be. Um, I mean, it's just a matter of waiting for these things to download. And what we're going to be doing is we're pretty much going to be slotting these materials into the actual like cliff. And, and we're going to be tiling the materials. And again, this thing we're going to have to repeat. We're going to have to rebuild it later on in Unreal uh, so that we can get the same thing. But what we're going to be painting is not materials. It's going to be masks. So we're going to decide where we want these particular things. Now, as you can see uh, on Substance, well, let me go here too. The downloads, give me just one second. So I'm just going to go to my downloads folder. Where is it? There we go. I'm going to grab all of those three materials and I'm going to drag and drop them here into the into the elements. All of them are going to define them as base material, base material and base material. And you need to define where you want them on the current session, on the project or in the library. I'm going to add them to my library just so that I have access to them uh, every time I need them. 
So I'm just going to import. As you can see, they're importing. Some of them, again, are heavy. Now, as you can see, this material right here is made out of uh, four slots. So you can, for this particular one, you can combine four materials. So that's why I selected like, uh, like the cliff, uh, a little bit of dirt, and then the sand. So those are going to be like th my three layers. I can add an, add an extra layer uh, if I want to later on. So let's start with the base layer. So my base layer is, of course, going to be my slick rock. And I'm going to go here, and then the material, I'm going to look for slick rock and just select it. And as you can see, we're tiling. We're, we're, right now, we're, we're not tiling. Right now, we're just like having this material. That's a 4K material, and it's working like this. However, here's where things get fun. We can actually increase the intensity here, see? So I'm tiling this material. This is like the repetition. So let's say we want to tile this like four times. And now look at the amount of detail that we have, right? Like the pixelation is not as much. I think I'm going to actually go like higher. Let's go like eight. And now the pixelation is even less because we're, we're tiling this material eight times on top of the whole thing, as you can see here. And, uh, and this is giving us a very, very nice effect here on the, on the cliff things, see? on the cliff side of things. Now we go to material number two, and I'm going to use this rumbly uh, dirt. So again, I'm just going to click here. I'm going to say rumbly dirt. Click here. And uh, right now, nothing's going to happen. Why is nothing happening? Well, because we need to go here to the first mask. And where we paint, we're going to bring, as you can see, the other material. In this case, the, the sand. So pretty much, I want like all of the top part here to be made out of the second material, which is like this sort of like a dirt, right? And I, I can immediately see that the size of the pebbles and everything is too big. So again, I go back to my material settings. I'm going to say, okay, you know what? This one's going to be repeated uh, 10 times. And again, I'm going to get a super high resolution because I'm tiling the material and everything's going to be over here. Now, here's where the fun begins as well, because this mask works exactly as any mask that you would think. So all the generators, all the tricks, all the things that we have inside of Substance works as well. So I'm going to add a fill layer, for instance, here. And this fill layer is going to be a white fill layer. So you can see that I'm replacing pretty much everything. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add a black mask to that fill layer. I'm going to right click again. I'm going to add a generator and I'm going to add a light generator. So the light generator, what I can do is I can point this light downwards so that all of the faces that are like facing up receive this sort of like a mask. So all of the, the points in my cliffs, as you can see here, that I have this sort of effect, I'm going to be receiving this. Now, um, unfortunately, we can't blend materials like so easily. There are a couple of things that we can change, uh, for instance, like the normal intensity and stuff. Uh, but there's not a lot of like overlays and, and things like that. So... Um, so yeah, that's there's there's a little bit of a limit here. Later on, inside of uh, inside of Unreal, for instance, we are gonna be able to go into the parameters of this material and actually like modify them a little bit. So if I want to like saturate them a little bit more, saturate a little bit less, I I, I should be able to do that. Actually, I'm not sure if I can actually. No, I don't think so. Like, we would need to see the, or maybe we can. Can we? I'm trying to see if there's like previews here now there's no okay so this first mask is the mask between like the first layer and the second layer again it would be nice if we could like modify the material here so i'm just gonna have to trust my uh my instinct that this thing is gonna work eventually inside of unreal so as you can see we get this now i don't want this soft effect because right now we had this very soft effect or this very soft transition going from from one point to the other so what i can do here is i can um i can add uh, let's say uh, okay well let's try like adding a a fill layer with a black color and then we're gonna add a black mask and then this black mask we're gonna add generator and we're gonna add a metal edgeware so technically like we should see this let's just turn this off so there we go and what we can do is we can multiply this maybe try multiplying this against the other one or just like blending this a little bit so we can kind of break up the silhouette a little bit. And that's an option. We could also just go here to this mask, add a paint layer, and then with a brush, like a normal traditional brush, like a dirt brush, we can break up some of the borders there so that we don't have this. And now I know that I'm, right now we're not seeing that much of a contrast. And again, the reason we're not seeing that much of a contrast is because uh, we, we can't modify the materials. But I, I don't really care about the materials because these materials were going to be like tweaking them and, and making sure they work nicely or they look nicely once we're on real. This is just like a like a previous kind of thing so that we see how the materials are going to be behave between each other so we can paint the masks because, because again, the masks are the things that we're going to be uh, using later on, okay? So there we go. Now, you could even you do this... Um, you could even do this with like a 
traditional material, like just like black, white, like you don't need this material. So I'm just using them so that they look a little bit nicer, of course, but you don't need them. So let's add the third material. I'm gonna go here into the into the shader again. Let's go to the third material and we're gonna look for the sand. Sand. Dirty sand, there we go. And this one, uh, we're gonna be painting on the next mask, which is this one right here. And again, if we paint, that's the sand. So I'm gonna add, let's say like a field layer, white, black mask, and then let's use like a, like a dirt generator. So I'm gonna use the dirt generator. And as you can see, now we're gonna have sand on all of the crevices of the elements. So again, of course, we can like modify this around, maybe increase the contrast. There we go, like, like a high contrast, I think it's gonna, it's gonna look good. Perfect, so now we're gonna have some like a little bit of sand. Now you can see the texture right now is super pixelated as well. We just go back to the shader here, go into the coordinates and say, you know what, this one's gonna be even like higher, let's say 20. And there we go, look at that. So this is what my player is gonna see. My player is gonna be walking around and he's gonna be seeing this sort of effect, this sort of texture like pretty much everywhere. And again, the cool thing is I, I can at any moment come here, let's add like a paint layer and I can paint like a little bit of extra sand in a couple places. Maybe I wanna create like a little bit of a road this is how we would like do it. So this material, let's, let's mask like a little bit of a, of a roth. And that's gonna blend or create this sort of like blend, again, with like a super high texture. Most of the rendering engines, again, like Unreal and Unity, they can do this sort of thing like on the engine. I just find it very easy to control what I want here inside of uh, inside of uh, Substance. So yeah, and now this layer, again, it's a mask layer. So at any point I could just like minimize this a little bit so that we don't see as much sand. And uh, there we go. <laughs> you, we have this very nice texture cliff. Like maybe I'm gonna paint, let's go back here and let's go with like a black color. And I'm just gonna remove some of the sand here. Maybe add a little bit, let's go again with the, with the white color and just paint like in a couple of areas. And there we go. So that's gonna give me like this sort of uh, effect. Um, and that's it, like this is what I would get or, or try to, to bring into my into my engine. Now, uh, for those of you that are not aware, we have this thing called the uh, iRay right here. But unfortunately, iRay is not gonna work. I forgot that <laughs> iRay doesn't work with this uh, material instance. Actually, if I want to like export this thing right here, you're gonna see that we're not gonna be exporting, uh, like, like if I try to, again to export this, it's, it's not gonna work. So what we need to export is we're gonna be using this output um, element and we're gonna be using this documents channel I believe it's this one, the one that we need. Let me give it a go. Uh, let's go uh, here. Next to live assets, lighthouse cliff. There we go. So if my calculations are correct, yes. So as you can see, what I have or what, what I have output are these masks. So this is what I need. That's, that's why we use this material layer in here inside of uh, inside of uh, Substance, and so, yeah, inside of Substance, because this mask that I'm getting here, these are the end of ambient locations, which by the way, we can use to like darken the, the textures. This mask are what we're gonna be using to later on inside of uh, inside of uh, uh, Unity or Unreal, uh, blend this uh, color, sort of create this uh, this same effect. So the, th the same thing you're seeing here with this amount of resolution, with this amount of like uh, detail and stuff, this is what we're gonna be able to create or to have inside of, uh, inside of, uh, uh, Unreal. So yeah, that's it guys. Uh, this is just again a quick thing if you want to like the, the topic the name of this thing is called PBR material layering. Again, a, a little bit of an advanced technique. We're going to generate this mask and that's when it's going to give us our end result. I'm not going to be able to bring this into um, into Maya. So this is like the thumbnail that, that you guys are going to be seeing. Again, don't worry about the colors. We can push and pull the contrast later on inside of uh, inside of Unreal so that they're darker, lighter and create a little bit more contrast. It's just a general like uh, a general effect right here. So thank you very much guys i'll see you back tomorrow remember don't forget to check back here in a couple of hours because we have a special surprise for you guys and uh, yeah if you guys are going to be traveling for thanksgiving and you're not going to be able to see or something to see the channel i mean um make sure you have a great time and uh yeah just leave us a message like share subscribe i'll see you back tomorrow bye bye guys